Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jason and you're watching my channel, Micro Investor. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Coinbase, the cryptocurrency exchange. Now Coinbase is going public through a direct listing over a traditional IPO. Now there is a difference between the two. A traditional IPO, uh, they can raise money on and uh, direct listing is a little bit different. Now we'll be covering that here in this video as well as how does Coinbase make their money? And that's another topic that we're gonna be talking about and even cryptocurrencies in general. So. As we get to it, if you guys don't mind, please do me a huge favor and please be sure to smash, destroy, and not only that like button because that helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and it helps spread my videos to more people that might find it interesting. Also subscribe if you have not already. And if you wanna become a Patreon, I do have one. The link is in the description. I do have a private Discord attached to that. Thank you to all the Patreons. All right, everybody, let's get to it. So Coinbase is going public through a direct listing, which is different than a traditional IPO, whereas a traditional IPO, new shares of the company would be uh, made available to the public markets, and in that way they can help raise money for the company as well on that day. Whereas a direct listing, uh, these are shares that employees have or early investors in the company uh, have, and those are going to be available to be traded to the public market. So uh, there's a bit of difference there. Now Coinbase has been trading on a NASDAQ private auction trading, and according to Bloomberg, shares of Coinbase traded between $350 and $375 per share, giving the company a pre-IPO valuation of between $90 to $100 billion. Bloomberg reported that the private auction ended with shares trading at a price of $350 per unit. Now for the people that are new to investing, the way that the valuations work, it is determined by the number of shares and the price of the stock. Now, if people are willing to pay for the stock at a much higher price, then the valuation would be higher. Now, easily people could say that Coinbase would be overvalued when it hits the market, but if people are willing to continue buying the stock at much higher prices, then the valuation is going to be higher. Now, sometimes fundamental factors do help influence valuations, things like price to book ratio, price to earning ratio, and price to earning growth ratio. But in today's world, in 2021, something tech, especially with cryptocurrencies, it's going to be hard to really base it off of those type of fundamentals because people are buying it for future valuations. And that's like stocks like uh, Tesla, for example, why some people will say the fundamentals don't make any sense. But at the same time, people are investing it for different reasons. They're investing it for Elon Musk or investing it for uh, the future. So it's all based off of when it comes down to whatever people are willing to pay for the stock. So in the case of Coinbase, them doing the uh, the private trading on it, it helps them determine what it's going to be priced at at the direct listing. Now, Coinbase last funding round in 2018 put the valuation of $8 billion. In January 2021, the company saw its valuation increase to around $50 billion based on privately traded shares on a private forum created by Coinbase. The exchange CEO, Brian Armstrong, is likely to see a compensation package of over $1 million per working day based on his $15 billion stake in the companies, Bloomberg reported. That's insane. <laughs> Now, Coinbase is going to be the largest direct listing that has ever been done on NASDAQ. Now, based on Coinbase's filings, owners of Class A common stock will be allowed to sell in the direct listing and will not be subject to lockup agreements. The, fil the filing also disclosed that Class A stock carries one vote per share, while Class B carries 20 votes per share. Coinbase has also stated that it will not raise any proceeds in the transaction. And that's the thing with these direct listings. They're not doing it to raise more money because doing so will then have to delete the shares that everybody everybody already has. So in this case, they're not doing that and everybody is available to sell their stock, no lockup period. And that's great because a lot of these companies, when they have these lockup periods, they uh, when they end, you could see a large uh, volume of shares being sold, which then could affect the stock price. And it's a much different scenario for Coinbase just doing it this route. Now, Coinbase is the largest U.S.-based cryptocurrency exchange, and with a 24-hour trading volume of $3.2 billion, it accounts for a large portion of cryptocurrency trading worldwide. Now, for people that are not familiar with Coinbase or cryptocurrencies, a Coinbase is basically like a stockbroker, but for the cryptocurrencies, and they're very much like a broker. I mean, they, they do everything. They, they list the price, the prices change, they list the uh, the percentages that they change, as well as uh, they show graphs and even include the volume 
that is traded within the last 24 hours, the market caps of the cryptocurrencies, and the supply of the cryptocurrencies. And that's basically how these things have value. Now, the way that Coinbase makes the money, the Coinbase says they charge a spread of about one half of 1% for cryptocurrency purchases and cryptocurrency sales. However, the actual spread may be higher or lower due to market fluctuations in the price of cryptocurrency on Coinbase Pro between the time we quote a price and the time when the order executes. And they have different ways that they charge. Uh, they charge a Coinbase fee in addition to the spread, which is greater of a, a flat fee or B, variable percentage fee determined by region, product feature, and payment type. So they have different fee thresholds for conversion amounts that they need to do. Uh, they also make money through uh, ways that people put, uh, add their money to Coinbase, like say if it's from a debit card, they're going to charge more uh, for taking a debit card, as well as they have uh, margin available. So if you use margin, that's another way that they make money. So uh, Coinbase has many ways that they're basically generating revenue. Some key statistics, Coinbase has 43 million users worldwide and over 2.8 million people actively exchange every month. Coinbase generated over $1 billion in revenue in 2020, a 136% increase on 2019. It also generated $322 million in net profit, the first time it made a yearly profit since 2017. Coinbase significantly increased its assets under management in 2020 from $35 to $90 billion. So I have no doubt that Coinbase's valuation is going to continue to grow, especially for how far it's come in just these last few years. Now, uh, the people have a big interest in investing into cryptocurrencies right now, and I don't think that interest is going to be slowing down anytime soon. I think it's just going to continue to grow. So I think that there is a lot of potential with Coinbase. So this might be something that I might be interested in getting in early and seeing where it goes, because um, I, I have no doubt that this is a giant market. I mean, we know it's a giant market. Tr trillions of dollars are traded on cryptocurrencies a year now. So uh, this is a pretty big deal. Anyways, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on Coinbase going public through a direct listing. So, as always, everybody, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. New videos coming out on my channel all the time. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next video coming very soon.